the debut is happening for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And all Dale Earnhardt Jr. ever wanted to do, Ken, was race. A third-generation driver. He grew up watching his dad not too far from here, growing up in Kannapolis, North Carolina. He won the NASCAR Busch Series Championship last year. And he officially battled with his father for the first time here on TBS in Japan last November. Finally, it was time to qualify this Budweiser car and make the Coca-Cola 600. A lot of pressure was on him, but he has a top 10 starting spot. And then today, trying his nerves in check, trying to keep a normal routine. There's been a lot of media attention, a lot of hype to the much anticipated debut of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Dale, we're finally down to it. <laughs> well, it's been a tough time. Uh, we've had a great week. We ran well with our cup car and qualifying and ran well with the bush car in the race and then practiced well with the with the cup car yesterday so things are looking pretty good i know the car is capable of running up front i don't you know whether the driver is we're going to find out here in, a, in just a few minutes but it's crazy man a lot of race fans are excited about it and and uh it's been a while to, since i've been to a cup race I, this place is uh pretty amazing on a on a sunny evening all right good best of luck and by the way his father debuted here 24 years ago this weekend qualified 33rd and finished 22nd and since then he's won seven championships we'll have more from the lowe's motor speedway we'll talk to all the stars here in the coca-cola 600 new moon rising in motorsports name is earnhardt there's several great new names mike hogwood is with the kid that finished 16th tonight yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. First of all, Dale, how you feel after 600 miles, and what did you learn? Actually, I feel pretty good. I was a little surprised. Uh, it's like we had a good run and a bad run, a good run and a bad run. Every time we change tires, the car would either great or then we change tires and it'd be real loose, and then change tires, the car would be good. I get the car up at the top and work the top a little bit and go around some cars and pass and race some people, but most of the most of the time, I try to try to stay out of everybody's way and not race anybody real hard and try to gain some respect from these guys because. Next year we're going to need it, and we uh, are racing for points, so we're just kind of chilling out and riding around and getting some notes for the team next year and things like that. First thing he did was he walked over here to your dad's hauler and walked back and had a conversation with him. What was that like? I just wanted to tell him uh, I was trying to get out of his way here the last lap he got up behind me, but we just, uh, I was just seeing to make sure he's real satisfied with the way we ran and as a car owner and a father, but uh, he was pretty happy, and that's good to know. Uh, we just didn't want to tear anything up. Uh, 600 miles is a long ways, and there's a couple times where I could have watered it up, but we just kind of uh, hung in there and tried to tighten the car up, but it wasn't going to get tighter. I think we need to work on the body a little bit to get the car to drive a little better, but it's something we couldn't resolve tonight, so we just kind of had to hang on. Dale Earnhardt Jr. not only made the 600 miles, definitely uh, gained some respect here in this Winston Cup garage. And tomorrow night, you can see him with a group of his friends, a little rock group called Bridge. He's playing drums. <laughs> there are the points right now, gentlemen. Jeff Burton, only 33 back of Dale Jarrett right now. And DJ hangs on to the lead here. Bobby Labonte in third, Mark Martin fourth, Tony Stewart in fifth in the point stand. And Gordon down to eighth. Boy, he did not have a good night with that finish of his. Way back when it was over in 39th spot. It's been a long time since the rookie was fifth in the point this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, it's over. Time and time again, you hear Winston Cup racing particularly with all of its thunder, all of its speed, its lightning activity referred to as a battlefield sport. And on this Memorial weekend, as we conclude our broadcast of the 600, we would pray on behalf of all of those who have given so much in the great wars and the other battles of America that in the future and for future generations like these young people we've seen compete here tonight, that the wars will be decided on racetracks with all the excitement and thunder that we've enjoyed in this great event. The Coca-Cola 600, 40th running from the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Yes, in Charlotte. We'll watch Matt Kenseth and Dale Earnhardt Jr. roll by for the final time. Two drivers that have the respect of the garage for how they behave on the racetrack and off the racetrack. And the crews aren't just their crews. These are crews from every team. Reminiscent of when Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s dad, Dale Earnhardt Sr., won the Daytona 500, and every crew member came out onto Pit Road to congratulate him for that. Well, this is saying thank you for a career. And 
knowing Dale Jr. as well as I do, I think this is going to mean more than anything. He talked to Bob about how important the relationships were that he's formed throughout the garage area, and that can be with his own crew and, and many of these crew members. I think the greatest compliment a person can have is the respect of your peers, and that's what you see right here. He's only halfway down pit road. He still has the other half of the crews that are standing there waiting to say thank you. Drivers and dignitaries before he climbed in the car all came up and acknowledged Dale Earnhardt Jr. And now, as he's nearing the final pit box, he'll roll out onto the track for the final time. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s career comes to an end as far as being a driver. He came up congratulating the 78. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the son of a legend to Daytona 500 champion and now one of the sport's biggest icons. Dale Earnhardt Jr. did it on his own terms. And we say thank you to Dale Earnhardt Jr. for an incredible career. You see right here. Dale Jr. looks like he's presenting the helmet to Rick Hendrick. I know Rick Hendrick has said that he's going to give the car to Dale Jr., but that relationship there is uh, way, way deeper than owner and driver. You see the bear hug there by Dale Jr. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Right there. And congratulations from wife Amy. Dale caught up with him, or excuse me, Dave caught up with him moments ago. Well, with that little bit of business taken care of, does that complete it, Dale? Oh, that, I said that too. Yeah. Um, cheers, buddy. I uh, had a lot of fun tonight. Man, I got in the fence late. We were running pretty decent. We had a lot of problems with the car, but Greg made some great adjustments, and we got the car running pretty good. And uh, right up on the fence, when the sun went down, I knew our car was going to come in. And uh, so that was uh, that was pretty fun. I hate to hit the wall because we'd have finished a little bit better. We lost about 10 spots getting that flat. But um, the deal I had with Rick was that if, if I uh, finished the race with the car in one piece, I get the car and he gets the helmet. So, yeah, so I'm going to take this thing back home. It's, uh, you know, it's got a little scuff here and there. We ran into Shrek's on the back straightaway because we high fiving him with our race car. <laughs> and uh, proud of him, man. What a story for Martin. I love it. I mean, we're, we're retiring and Martin wins the championship. That's a storybook. So I uh, hope all the fans enjoyed this season. I know it uh, wasn't everything we wanted on the racetrack, but we sure had fun off of it and going to miss everybody. Uh, but we'll be back. Can you describe on the cool down lap what was going on inside, Dale? I was happy for Martin. I was like, man, I'll catch up there to him and run into his car. <laughs> um, I think everybody was running into him. So, uh, you know, I was just thinking about Martin, really. But uh, I knew that I'd finished this race. So we was going to meet on pit road with his cooler and uh, have, some, have some beers with my team. These guys are like my brothers. And uh, we really fight for each other, lean on each other. And uh, these are the friendships that I'll have long beyond my racing days and uh so this is a good good moment with them are they coming on the road with us are they coming on the road with nbc well, oh with next i don't know they'll, they'll, they're still working right a lot of them still, still gonna be working on this car for alex next year and he's getting him one hell of a crew so these are top top shelf top notch guys man the last lap's been rundale what's it like well i'm uh 
I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure what what the what the feeling is. I didn't have any real. I didn't cry until I was hugging Rick ne Rick's neck. Man, he's been like a father to me, and the things that he's done for me, uh, personally and professionally. But the personal stuff, you know, he's really really helped me more than anybody will ever know. And uh, he's done that for a lot of people. And uh, so I uh, will miss trying to make him proud, you know. And I know I'll still be able to do things that will make him proud because he's like a daddy. But I'll miss trying. I'll miss driving his cars and um, trying to make him proud on the racetrack. They all, people came from thousands of miles to watch you race one last time. You gave him a, you gave him a thrill, really. Well, I don't know. We, we, we um uh, we hope they enjoyed it and, and uh, they got to see a great race there at the end. I was I was sitting there right behind that watching that and it's pretty exciting. We'll be at the racetrack a little bit with our Xfinity stuff next year. We'll run a couple races, so say hey to everybody when we come back and do that. And obviously we're going to be in the booth, but we'll be around and um, still want to have uh, a purpose in this sport. You know, after driving, you got to find something you're passionate about, something that matters to you. And, I think I'm, I, I think I might have found that with broadcasting and, and obviously still only in junior motorsports. We're going to be competitive and, and competitor inside you will still be on fire and, and trying to keep that team going. I just texted with uh, Ellie Sadler all, all morning about like, man, we're going to come back next year. You just get your head right over the offseason. We're coming right back here to try to win that thing again because, uh, you know, because because we want to we, we want to be a part of this sport as long as we can. We really do. Um, it's time for somebody else to get this car. It's a great opportunity for Alex, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Um, but we definitely want to be a part of the sport no matter what. Well, on behalf of all of us who kind of grew up with you in this sport, thank you. You provided us the life's work. Thank you so much. And again, uh, congratulations to Martin. No matter who won that championship tonight, we had four amazing race car drivers uh, that would have represented the sport. Uh, but I, I, am, I am happy that Martin did it. What, a, what an accomplishment for his life. I've known him so long, man, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see him accomplish that for himself and his family. Incredible. Dale Jr., the final ride at Homestead.